I come from an old Board of Trade family. My dad started at the Chicago Board of Trade back in 1923 as a runner. He worked his way up to be a floor broker, uh, mainly in the soybean futures pit. And since I was a little boy, um, four years old, five years old, as long back as I can remember, um, my dad started taking me downtown to the exchange. And I just loved the feel of the trading floor. And late grade school, I decided this is what I wanted to do. Now, you know, when you're in seventh, eighth grade, you know, you know did I really know what I, was, what, I, what I was getting myself into? But it did help me get through high school, college. It was very empowering, in a sense, in, in to know where you want to go. I started out um, at the Mid-America Exchange, which was an exchange that, thank God, there was smaller contracts. Um, I proceeded to go broke three times. Um, I lost some money my dad gave me, lost some money my mom gave me, and lost some money that my grandfather gave me. And I um, went to my dad said, can you get me a job? He got me a job as a trade checker. So um, I was good with numbers, you know, balancing. Um, went away to college for a, with a reunion weekend, you know, took a day off, came back. Boss said, you called in sick, you lied, you're fired. But by the way, can you stick around a couple weeks till we find somebody to, to replace you? I really didn't have much choice. Go back to my dad, say, okay, now what am I gonna do that? Okay, I'll get you a job. It gets me a job as a runner, okay? So now I proceeded to go from trader to trade checker to runner, <laughs> okay? So I've gone right down the ladder of, of the trading career that I thought I was going to be the greatest trader ever. So now I'm going along making $79 a week, take home pay. I'm literally living on cheese sandwiches and potato chips. And um, things are not looking so good for me. My dad comes back to me. He's ready to retire. It's like, well, we got to sell your mid-am membership. And, you know, hey, hell, you got a college degree. Go out, sell insurance, you know, do something, okay? But, you know, I need this. I need, the, the, need to sell your membership. So something happened there. And you'll find in life, there's, you know, some people call them cuts in life, where something happens that's life-changing. And what happened that t at that time for me is my brother stepped up and said, you know what, I'll lend George $1,000 and I'll teach him a trading technique that I have learned at the Mid-America Exchange called spreading. So, and I'll, I'll never forget when I got back on the floor and I made my first half cent on a soybean spread, which was $5, that was the best five dollars I made in my life. Um, from there, um, I went on to the Board of Trade. I got involved in agricultural options the first day that they opened. And I got to be very successful very quickly. And I remember there was this priest, Father Slattery, that I used to go and I used to talk to about, you know, what is life? You know, what's the meaning of life? What, what, why do things work the way they work? And, we got into this discussion and he said, well, you know, can't you have a company? And I said, well, no, I can't have a company. Only the big shots have companies, you know. So um, he's like, well, you know, from what you do, you're successful, you know, could you bring more people? And I'm like, well, actually, you know, I could bring young people in. I could have them clerk for me. I could train them how to trade and then I could back them. And that's when I started my first company, Hanley Group. Um, but, and that was another, an, another time in my life where somebody challenged me to look and see if there was possibly more out there. So since then, I've, I had a 30 year successful trading career. Um, I started three trading companies, um, Hanley Group, which I sold to FC Stone a little over three years ago, Blink Trading, that I sold to Gecko back in 2002. And then Infinium Capital Management, which I started with some of my protégés back in 2001. So uh, as time was going on and I had these blessings, this success come my way, I started to think about, again, what does this all mean? 
And I started to, to, to come to the conclusion that this is, at some level, it's not really about me. This is about what can I do with my success? So one thing I was always very good at throughout my business career was leveraging things. You know, I traded in the commodity option markets, which you have a tremendous, and back then even more so, a tremendous amount of leverage. And so I started to think about what, you know, what, how can I leverage my success? And I started to think about some of the small gifting that I had done over the years. And it really, really dawned on me that this was the purpose of all of this, is how am I going to give this back to the community? And where am I going to give this back in the community? And it came to me that just like my brother stood up and supported me, you know, because you know, where would I be if it wasn't for him believing in me and supporting me with that $1,000 loan um, back in 1979? And so what I, what, what I started to explore was the, the, what could be done and what was the effect of giving back to, to younger people and, in, and, and, and giving back in, through mainly scholarships. So I formed the Hanley uh, Foundation. It's now the George and Amanda Hanley Foundation. And the main charge of the foundation is we give out scholarships. So I've gotten very involved with the University of Illinois, um, very involved at the University of Dayton. I'm on the board of trustees at the University of Dayton. Um, St. Sabina School down on the south side of Chicago, helping kids get through grade school there. Um, we um, also um, support, on, mainly on my wife's side, um, is the charter schools of some of the charter schools of the city of Chicago. Um, so we just made one of our largest gifts ever to a, a newer charter school called the Academy for Global Citizenship. And this is a school down on the southwest side of Chicago, down around Midway Airport. And they teach kids in a completely different way. Um, they teach kids math by teaching them about nutrition. They teach kids science about teaching them about the environment. Um, they give the kids three organic, locally uh, sourced meals a day. A completely different kind of concept in so far as teaching goes. And why did we give that gift to that school? Because Sarah Elizabeth, who's the founder of the school, brilliant woman, she, she needed one big gift to then turn around and leverage to raise the rest of the money to build out her new campus. And this new campus will have a urban farm, it'll have solar panels, it'll have, it'll have wind power, it'll be a net positive campus as far as energy use. So when I think back about my career, and I think back about you know, traders that came my way and which traders stayed and which traders, which traders didn't make it. And I bring that all together in who we look to to support. You know, the one, the one conclusion that I come to is that sometimes you don't know at first. It's one, one point. You don't know how it's going to turn out. Um, two, if you stick with people, and if they have the right heart, good things will happen. Three, I like to get in early on things. I used to like to be involved in new emerging markets. Yeah, I know it's getting tougher and tougher. I know that you know, I've seen in my 36-year career tremendous change. You know, I talked about the change that's coming now. You know, Dodd-Frank, not so much on the future side, although I'm sure the compliance department at CME would differ with me, but definitely in the off-exchange OTC markets, huge, huge regulatory burden, Dodd-Frank. Um, so, um, so all in all, it's been a great career for me, and I'm really loving this, this next step in my career, which is this philanthropic side and figuring out 
how to leverage my gifting to have that ripple effect with young people, empowering them with an education to go out and, and do great things. So, thank you.